One of the late 80s Empire Picture releases that got stuck on a shelf during that company's bankruptcy is Prison, which has an interesting crew behind it. It was conceived and produced by Erwin Yablons, the creative genius who gave us Roller Boogie. His ideas were fleshed out by screenwriter C. Courtney Joyner, writer of Class of 1999 and the only good Puppet Master movie, Puppet Master 3. Richard Band provides the music and seems to be trying to recreate bits of the Aliens soundtrack. Most notably, though, it's the directorial debut of Rennie Harlan, director of Die Hard 2 and Deep Blue Sea. That's a lot of B-movie talent behind the scenes for this one. It's a shame things aren't better than they are. Budget cuts require the reopening of a Wyoming prison that's been closed since the 1960s. When the prisoners arrive, they are put to work, and breaking through the wall that leads to the prison's electric chair unleashes a vengeful force that starts doing stuff to people. Viggo Mortensen stars in prison as the prisoner we're supposed to give a shit about. And interestingly, one of his fellow prisoners is his mumbly brother from Texas Chainsaw 3. Ultimately, it seems like the spooky prison ghost is super pissed off at the warden for executing him for an apparently unjust reason. And so it just menaces everyone else in the prison except the warden until the final scene. You know, ghost logic. Have a legit beef, take forever to get to it, dick around with everyone you don't have a problem with before finally getting to your revenging. And yet the one thing this movie has going for it are the ghost bits, which are all super creative and badass. Unfortunately, there are about five moments in a movie that wastes a lot of time on randomness. A prison full of convicts aren't compelling horror movie victims, since really, who cares about these assholes? Zeus from No Holds Barred is one of them, and gets to start Zeusing out towards the end too, but again, I don't care. The cool imagery is mostly wasted on characters who have nothing to do with the main story. Why is the ghost mad at them? That's never explained. The cast, crew, and effects make Prison a tough movie to skip, but unfortunately that's the recommendation I have to make. Destroyer, shown here as Shadow of Death, which is a terrible title, is a film from the same time about mostly the same thing, with many of the same issues. At some point in the past, mass murderer Ivan Mosier, played by Lyle Alzado, was sent to the electric chair. During his execution, the power failed. And that sparked, heh, <laughs> a prison riot. His body was never recovered during the chaos. The prison was shut down and sometime later a film crew gets permission to make a women in prison movie there. And unfortunately for them, it seems that Mosier might not be dead after all. Our two leads are unconventional. They're the fake movie screenwriter and stunt woman, and also huge fans of hair product. They end up as the two who must discover the truth about the riot and confront whoever's killing off the film crew. I'd always assumed Destroyer was an action film based on the title and the poster, but nope, it's a slasher movie. Well, eventually a slasher movie because it takes forever to finally get going. The backstory is never exactly set in stone since our first exposure to it is someone's dream that has all the details jumbled up. And so when most of that dream kinda sorta does start happening in real life, you just basically have to go with it and accept the premise. That pacing presents problems later when essentially a room full of characters are all killed off screen and all at once. You could have done a lot more with these people over the course of the film, but instead in one fell swoop, they're all gone and that's another disappointment. The film within the film bits are pretty interesting and actually seem like a film production, instead of the bullshit other movies try to pretend movie making is like. Making these scenes all the more interesting is Anthony Perkins as the film's director. He's said to have been a last minute replacement for Roddy McDowell who dropped out. And while McDowell might have been fine in the role, Perkins is just fantastic here. He's not at all disinterested in the role and gives it his all. fucking milk cut! Deborah Foreman, our lead actress and star of the never-released Grizzly 2, in addition to appearing in just about everything else in the 80s, of course has her own stunt double here, which is amusing seeing a stunt woman character have a very obvious stunt double. But speaking of stunts, the finale is jam-packed with some pretty awesome ones. While this shares similar pacing and logic problems with Prison, it has enough components that click for me to give Destroyer a mild recommendation. Hell, Lyle Alzado kills a guy with a jackhammer, so yeah, why not? Hey Jack, I'm a dude, cut it out, I know you're just doing your job, but that kind of noise is just too much for human beings to handle. Hey Jack, I'm a dude, I'm a jack somewhere else, maybe on the moon. Human beings weren't meant for stuff to be so loud. 